to get caught up in the fear and the frustration because of things that have happened to you in the past, it doesn't make any sense because it's not going to propel you into your future. So for anybody who's worked with me, every time I tell you to start creating experiences in your world that open up your life and, and broaden your horizons, this is why. Because we're meant to have experiences and to learn and to grow and you're not going to have experiences if you don't get out there. Welcome to the Thriving After Divorce Podcast, where you learn the secrets to reclaim your life and turn your breakup into your breakthrough. Transformation expert, internationally published author, and online show host Tanya Marie Dubay will help you quickly pick up and move on as you tune into interviews with some pretty cool experts from around the world, showing you how to live your best life after divorce. If you're ready to learn the skills to finally put your divorce behind you for good, dig down really deep and step into your highest self, then you're in the right place. Here's your host, online educator and mom of two, Tanya Marie Dubay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Thriving After Divorce radio podcast. I am your host, Tanya Marie Dubay. This week is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to. Today, I'm going to be talking specifically about healing from childhood abuse, healing from childhood trauma. So if you have little kiddos around, you're going to want to use your headphones or listen when you're alone. So I'm just going to jump right in here. So some of you know that by the time I was 12 years old, I had lived in eight different foster homes and had been placed with my mother and her husband who decided to use me as a punching bag daily. So one day when I was 12, I went into my bedroom and grabbed all my savings, which was $18. I ran away into a life on the street, now sleeping under trees in cars, sneaking into my friend's basements in the middle of the night, all just trying to finish school. I was very academic and I did this over a period of six years, trying to always get on my feet, but struggling with no money and feeling somewhat feral because I was in a state of constant fear. I was always in survival mode. So during the two years that I had lived with my mother and stepfather from 10 to 12 years old, I had been mentally, physically, emotionally, and sexually assaulted. And by the time I was 22 and about to start university, I was mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausted. I had to drop out of high school and uh, I have picked a ripe handful of violent and narcissistic relationships with men who have disrespected me, used me, physically assaulted me, created problems for my life, cheated on me, lied to me, tried to hold me captive, and abandoned me emotionally or physically time and time again. Now, the reason I tell you all of this is because these are the consequences of childhood trauma. We have the hardest time fitting in because nothing about our childhood is relatable. We learn pretty early on that not only can nobody identify with us, but they kind of look at us funny when we tell our story and we become ashamed and embarrassed, self-loathing, and our entire world becomes an inner dialogue about how there must be something wrong with us to make us so unlovable. When our parents are tortured, we become tortured by extension and we learn very quickly to maintain our survival by mastering the art of people-pleasing. We learn that what we want and need doesn't really matter because we are so consumed with keeping our immediate surroundings bearable that the very act of people pleasing begins to break us apart. It begins to chip away at our self-confidence. So every time we do it, we get further and further away from ourselves. So if your life was anything like mine, what was happening to you was so consuming that all you could dream about was leaving. And this is how so many of us end up with men who feed off of us, who systematically dismantle us, separating us from ourselves, from our loved ones, holding us hostage, making us feel like we aren't good enough, not worth the effort, not lovable, like we should be grateful to have them and that we would never find love if we broke up with them. So now despite our intelligence and our internal gifts and all of the terrible things that we've survived, our education and our accomplishments on top of all of that, they make us feel stupid and inferior and we do everything we can to defend who we are and what we've come through. Now, it's agonizing to live here, but narcissists revel in this. They want to keep us confused, living in chaos and dysfunctional. And the whole time, they're talking about you and reversing the roles. And whatever they've been doing to you, they now turn the tables and tell whoever will listen that it was you mistreating them. This is one of the hardest things that we go through when we're dealing with narcissists, isn't it? So you ask, how do I heal from my childhood trauma so that I never, ever fall into a narcissistic trap again? 
That's a fantastic question. I'm so glad you asked. Now, I think that when we go through a traumatic relationship with a narcissist, and maybe specifically when we have children with them, it takes us all the way back to the scary parent-child relationship with the abusive parent because they both tried to trap you in their respective ways. So with the parent, you had no choice. You couldn't leave. And with a narcissist, their whole job is to trap you so that you can't leave. And they do this with the children that you have. It's very much the same. Now, we're still trying to find a way to keep the peace, right? We still are caught up in the anger and the fear and the sadness and the chaos. Now, I believe we looked for a replacement for the abusive parent because dysfunction becomes normal at some point after living with it for any period of time. We also feel unlovable and almost like we don't deserve it on some level, even though we know that that's not true. We have learned to settle so early in life, always searching for fulfillment in people or things because facing what's happened to us would mean that we would have to come to terms with our fears and that feels really scary. So I want you to consider a few things that I'm going to say, and if you would humor me, let's just pretend that what I'm going to talk about for the remainder of the episode is fact, and I'll tell you why within a minute. So number one, the trauma that you went through wasn't yours to hold on to. Now, I know that sounds off the wall a little bit, but hear me out. So the things that your parents did to you were a part of their soul's journey, not yours. The things they said and did It was really them talking to themselves, but using you as a mirror. So I just want you to think about this for a second. When you think back to your abusive parent, would you say that they were happy in their lives? Were they miserable? Did they feel worthless? I mean, I look back on my relationship with my mother and I can see this now. I can look back and see every horrible thing she ever said to me. She was really saying to herself, I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I took the brunt of it. And of course, not knowing that I was her mirror, that I was showing up this way, every single thing she said became like a dagger in my heart. Every look she gave me, every time she set me up to fail all of these things. I took them so personally because what else are you going to do when you're a child? Of course, you trust the person who gave birth to you. You trust the person who's your parent. So I want you to consider if your abuser was a happy person, would they have treated you the way that they did? Did they feel emotionally trapped because of the things that were done to them? Now think back to all of those things that they said and did and imagine instead of you standing in front of them, imagine a real mirror and see them talking to themselves. Does that make sense now? If you replace yourself with that mirror, they would have the same dialogue. It would be the exact same conversation. So I want you to consider that that the things that they've said and they've done on their own soul's journey on this earth has nothing to do with you. So in my life, this makes sense to me. Every mean, horrible thing, you know, my stepfather said to me, he was really talking to himself. That's sad and it's painful. And when I was 12, I almost killed myself because of this. And I'm so happy that I didn't because life isn't about us holding on to these human experiences that we have. Life is about learning from these experiences and using the tools that we can draw out of them and then move on. And that's, that's a tall order. I understand that it's a really, really difficult thing for you to wrap your head around, which is why I hope you listen to this podcast episode over and over again until it starts making some sense. So Now, the second point is that I personally believe that our souls each have a purpose for being here. So whatever those reasons, they have nothing to do with the journey of any other soul. And what I mean by that is each one of us has come here with some some purpose, some goal. I really do believe at the end of the day, those goals have something to do with helping other people. But I don't know for sure, but this is how my life has taken shape. And this is sort of what I think about now. You know, many of you know that my son at about three years old or three and a half years old looked over at me one day when he was casually eating grapes or something. And he said, mommy, I'm so happy I picked you. And this got me thinking, you know, uh, I could only get so much out of him at that age. But over the years, he started talking more and sharing more. And as his vocabulary expanded, suddenly he was able to tell me all of these crazy things about this life that he remembered that was just like a moment away for him. So that set me on this path to start thinking about my spirituality and how connected I am to it and what all of this really means. If if that's true and my son picked me, then what does that mean for me with him? Does that mean that I'm his teacher or does that mean that he's mine? So I start thinking about all of these things and as we are mirrors for each other, at what point does he detach from me and I detach from him so that I can make my 
purpose fulfilled. And I don't mean detach as in, you know, we're never going to see each other again, like we live in the wild. <laughs> what I mean is, at some point, we cannot take on the sins of our parents as, as a way to um, chain us down to the reasons why we don't do something. Because my soul's journey has nothing to do with my son's soul's journey. As his parent, it's my job to teach him and to guide him and to give him all the tools he needs. But his journey can't be about mine. Do you see what I'm saying? So at some point, all of the things that your parents did to you, you have to be able to detach yourself from it because it's not yours to hold on to. Yes, you were victimized. You are not a victim. It's the same thing with having a narcissistic or borderline personality disorder. X, I've been in very physically violent, dysfunctional relationships. I can choose to hold on to that pain like it's mine, but it's not. It's not mine. It's not mine to hold on to. So when I came to this point in my life where I could give everybody that back, those people who did all those things to me, and I did it through meditation, I give it back. It's not mine to hold on to. I cut those cords. So I just want you to think about that. I want you to consider that our human side learns by copying, by mimicking how to survive so that we have the skills that we need to have the experiences our souls crave. And and deserve, right? And while we inhabit these bodies, we're supposed to live out that purpose. So we have no claim to our mother's or father's lives, just like I was just saying, or their choices or the way they show up. They aren't ours to own, right? So even if we were the mirror, that was the position we took in these people's lives. We were there to teach them, but they got so caught up in their human experience that they didn't see. You were their teacher. They weren't ready. So that takes me back to that whole idea about is my son my teacher or am I his? Because if we believe, and not all of you are going to believe this, but this is why I said just humor me because I'd like you just to consider, consider the possibility that your child's soul is so many hundreds maybe of years older than your soul, right? In the human experience, we look at everything as, as this is it. You know, we get so caught up in anguish and assumptions and this revolving door of conversations and memories. And I should have said this and I should have done that. But really, our real lives are really right around us and our children and these relationships that we have with people that we love. I mean, this is the most important thing. We're supposed to be supporting each other as we fulfill our purpose, as we fulfill why we're here. So to get caught up in in the fear and the frustration because of things that have happened to you in the past, it doesn't make any sense because it's not going to propel you into your future. So for anybody who's worked with me, and I'm hoping you're, I'm hoping that you're listening on this podcast right now, every time I tell you to start creating experiences in your world that open up your life and, and broaden your horizons, this is why. Because we're meant to have experiences and to learn and to grow. And you're not going to have experiences if you don't get out there. So that said, <laughs> I want you to consider that that life is like, you know, reading a book with chapters. We aren't meant to get caught up in the first few chapters of our lives. These were lessons and these were experiences, but they weren't meant to dominate the entire story. Our soul's intention is not to latch on to behaviors. It's to have experiences, not just good or bad ones, because those are labels that we give to them. Is this making any sense? I hope that this is making sense for you. So now I'd like to get back to fear and how this is a human concept only in the mind. So we are biologically wired to protect ourselves. So fear is meant to actually save our lives. But because our brain can't differentiate between that, you know, the alleyway and the scary fear of an axe wielding psycho killer <laughs> waiting for us and our own fear of failure or success. It's really up to us to push past these comfort zones all the time. This is how we rewire our brain, which is what I was just saying about creating new experiences. I've coached so many people in my life and I've said to them, no matter what happens, just please do what I ask you to do. And of course, I understand their financial scope and what they're capable of doing. And wherever that lies, my advice always is go do the thing that you've always wanted to do. A lot of the times when we get caught up in relationships that don't serve us, we've given up a good part of ourselves on, that's our choice, but we've given up a good part of ourselves, all the things that we wanted to do, our dreams and our goals and all of these ideas that we had for the future. We give all of those things up because now we're living in survival mode and we're in this chaos and we're in this dysfunction and it's very consuming. And then most of the time we're on the floor crying. 
So I had one client in the past, he wanted to jump out of an airplane. So I said, go jump out of an airplane. <laughs> and he actually did it and followed my instruction of every single thing that he had told me he wanted to do. I challenged him to do it and he did it. And this entire process completely changed this man's life. So I want you to just consider that, right? We have to open up our lives. We have to push past our comfort zones. As scary as it is, we just, we have no choice because this is what your soul craves and this is what you need in order to have the most fulfilling life that you possibly can. So this is why to me, it's important to look at the soul's journey versus the human journey. Now they're very different. And if you can accept that your soul is here to have experiences, both good and bad ones, right? We have to be grateful for the bad ones, just as we are the good ones and that we're not meant to get stuck in them, then you know what? You're golden. I mean, now when we go through trauma, we might forge ahead because our experiences move us into milestones, but we keep revisiting our childhood again and again because of our self-limiting beliefs and our fears. And then we get stuck there with unworthiness and self-loathing and self-sabotage. So trauma to me is, is an experience. That's all it is. How you look at it and how you respond to it, that's really a choice. I mean, I say that a little lightly and I don't, I don't mean to, I don't mean for that to be taken so lightly. Now I, I want you to remember what I've come through in my life. When I say these words, it's because I've done a lot of work in this area. You know, some of you might not know this, but in the 2005 London bombings, I was six months pregnant sitting on the bus in front of the one that blew up. And I had literally just missed my train that blew up at Edgware road in London in England. So, I mean, that trauma, led to me struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder six years after that had happened. But I'm telling you that the trauma that we go through, it will open you up to things about yourself, bring you down to a deeper connection to yourself and lift you up higher than you ever thought possible. If you can adopt the idea, you know, that you have been victimized, but you are not a victim. I really want to hit this home with you. That experience for me, the bombings really made me understand that I was in the wrong marriage, right? Having a baby that I wanted in the wrong marriage with the wrong person who wasn't able to support me or love me properly or give me what I needed to fulfill my life, right? When we take on these partnerships, we often think that it's the other person's job or, you know, that they should participate in a normal way. <laughs> I didn't have any of those things. So going through the London bombings made me realize that my life, all the experiences that I had been through couldn't be for nothing. I couldn't go down in a ball of flames because I was unhappy in this marriage. After everything I've been through, after everything that I had survived up until that point, I mean, even the bombings, I, it was bonkers to me. So do you see how going through something traumatic can really open you up to the possibilities of what you're meant for or where you can go in your life or what you shouldn't settle for, right? So anyway, I'd like to, I'd like to lead you down this other path. So understanding all of this, I think really helps us with meditation and journaling, understanding that our soul's journey is the real journey and the human journey is only the vehicle for that. I think it really liberates us past, you know, the sins of our parents and really into our healing. So I want you to understand that you are not a victim of your childhood unless you choose to be. So victim, victimizing ourselves got us involved in these bad relationships. So understanding that your father or your mother, you know, they were simply living their lives with their choices. And when you think about that, it frees you to live your life with your own, own choices. So if you get stuck and you can't move forward and you can't wrap your head around it, and it's the reason you're not successful, or it's the reason you can't be in a relationship, or it's the reason that your friendships don't work out, then, then that's your choice. Because there are so many free resources out there to get you from stuck into this breakthrough of a life where you can literally build and create anything that you want. And again, saying that, I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this podcast episode, but you have to understand, look at, look, just look at the life that I've had and what I've come through. And I'm telling you, that once you wrap your head around the things that have happened to you not being your things to hold on to, you're free. You know, you're free. You're free to, to become exactly who you want to be. You can write it all down on a piece of paper. I've said this so many times if you followed any of the interviews I've ever done, but I talk about this, this exercise that I did when I was 
I think 14 years old. I think I'm going to credit Oprah with this because I think this is where I learned this, but she had said, you know, you can create who you want to become. If you didn't have a mother figure, find one. Who is the female role model in your life? It could be a friend. It could be someone's aunt or grandmother or mother. It could be your own aunt, or maybe it was your mom. Maybe it was your grandma. Maybe it's Wonder Woman. (laughs) Anybody. And write down a list of all of their characteristics that make them the strong, bold, smart, beautiful woman that they are. And then in the next column, write down all of your strengths and all of your characteristics that make you who you are. And then you're going to compare those two. You're going to compare those two columns and you're going to cross off all of the things that match. So that's something that you have that your hero has. You're going to cross it off. You've already got it. And whatever's left over on the hero side, Those are the things that you need to learn how to do to become the woman that you want to be, right? But you have to let go of all of the pain and the chains and everything that holds you to this life, that keeps you stuck, that makes you feel like a victim, that keeps you from having loving, fulfilling relationships with other people. I've been down this road. I understand this completely. But again, I will take it back to, it is completely up to you. So this is what I teach mothers, you know, who have children who are going through divorces with normal fathers, narcissistic fathers, violent fathers. I mean, I teach them that they don't need, first and foremost, don't need an apology from them because these adults are living their lives the only way they choose to live their lives, really. So, I mean, we have to remember we do what we can with what we know. That's almost a tongue twister, isn't it? We do what we can with what we know. If we don't open up spiritually and learn, well, then that's on us. The damage we do to others is really only damage we're doing to ourselves if we understand this concept of the soul's journey. So we could do all of the reading in the world on self-help and habits and behavior patterns, and I talk about this stuff all the time. But if you don't have this underlying concept, we will never be truly free. Do Do you understand that? I hope that's making sense. So now the third thing I want you to think about is that your traumatic bond to your mother or father is really in your mind. Now, I want you to understand that their soul's journey, again, was theirs and not yours to hold on to. It's like, okay, it's like this. It's like learning how to do a new job in a new field because you were broke and needing the money. So after a while, you're forgetting all of your training and your real industry, and then eventually you know, you stop using it all together because now you're comfortable in this new job and in this new world. It's, you know, it's fixing a problem, isn't it? So maybe, maybe you didn't even want the job, but because you turned your attention that seemed to temporarily fix a temporary problem, you got caught up in that past. So does that, does that make sense? The way you've been living is that is the job and, and your real training is in your spiritual connection to source. Now I want you to understand that you are completely and utterly separate from that. I know this can be a little bit confusing, so bear with me here. This thinking has revolutionized my life. It's how I've been able to completely heal from the physical, the sexual, and the emotional abuse. It's why I can get upset, but not get really, really angry anymore because of how I've been victimized over and over again. So like all of us, I can get caught up in the human experience. Yes, but my soul isn't concerned with these things. So there's no point in me giving that attention. There's no point in me feeding that negative stuff. So I have to understand that they were experiences that led me to work on what I'm doing now, which is giving me more experiences and more growth. And it's helping me help other people all over the world. So where I'm standing in my life now, I feel like because this has been awakened in me, it's it's my job to wake that up in you too, because I really do believe that the world is full of possibilities. And for those of us who've experienced, you know, serious childhood trauma, we there's at some point you have to be able to unlock yourself from that. You have to be able to break free from that. And I really do believe that this thinking, this this way of understanding the soul's journey versus the human journey is it right? It's, 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 if you wrap your head around that concept, it is the most liberating and freeing thing that's ever been explained to me, right? So now I have something special for you that I've created. So, you know, I've said to myself a million times, I wish I had a map for everything I go through. (laughs) I remember saying this when I had children, why didn't anybody give me some kind of instruction manual? So especially when going through my divorce, I, 
you know, I'm still going through my divorce now. I didn't have anybody to say, this is what you're going to go through. This, this is how many times you're going to want to hit your head off the wall. This is what's going to happen next. So this is, this is now what I've created for you. And it's called the Divorce Recovery Starter Kit. It covers everything from dealing with shame and blame and guilt and rejection, self-love for you and activities for your kids and building the mindset that you need for divorce and moving on with your life. So this is the roadmap again that I wish I had. So I'm hoping it gives you some peace and some love. Now you don't have to read the entire thing in one shot. There's a table of contents and you just go through it, dealing with the things that you have to deal with, but let it be the thing that you fall back on before you get emotionally tangled up in whatever fight you're having with your ex or whatever fight you're having with yourself that day. Whatever you're feeling as you're going through this, I've put it in this guide for you so that you understand what's coming, you understand how you're gonna feel, you understand where you should be putting your focus, you know, I, I talk about this endlessly when you're struggling, you need something to focus on. So I give you all of this stuff inside of this guide. So inside the description of the podcast, you can find the link for the Divorce Recovery Starter Kit and click to download it. So you're not going to want to miss this. So once again, inside of the description of the podcast, you can find the link for the Divorce Recovery Starter Kit and it'll be ready for you to download just like that. So everybody, I will leave you with this whopper of an episode today, and I hope that um, you will listen to it over and over again, and it helps clear away some of the, the messiness of what you've been through and gives you some perspective. I would love to hear from you. If you want to tell me what you think, you can reach me at info at and I will see you here next week. Thank you so much for listening to Thriving After Divorce Radio. Again, I am your host, Tanya Marie Dubé. you again so 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 much for joining us on the thriving after divorce radio podcast we're coming to you every monday morning so that you can start your week with intention and some powerful advice for what you're dealing with so please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends and your family my goal is to help change 1 million lives with this work because when you teach a woman you teach an entire community everybody benefits and the love spreads so please feel free to comment review share and like with your help I know I can reach this goal. So have a beautiful day and we will see you next week.